Hello, my name is Andy O'Neill, and thanks for watching Weblitica TV. I'm joined today by my good friend, Carl Holmes. Carl has been building database systems since 1996, starting with Microsoft Access and VBA. Carl was introduced to NAC in 2017 and attended the London NACCon in 2018, and since that time has been a full-time NAC developer. Carl is a registered Integramat partner and part of the NAC Experts Network. Carl loves training, tutoring, and mentoring others on the NAC platform and has a YouTube channel with helpful NAC tutorials. Welcome, Carl. Welcome. Yes, good evening. Oh, it's afternoon for you, isn't it? But it's evening over here. It so, is. yes, good evening. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me a little bit about uh, NACCon 2018 and kind of your, your journey from your intro introduction in 2017 to 18 to, to doing this full time. Oh, wow. We've only got an hour. Um, yeah, it's, I'd like to say it's really super interesting, but um, most of what's happened has been fairly accidental. Um, so I would classify myself as an accidental developer. Um, I came from, uh, as you can tell by my old face, uh, from a, an era of older software, but through the ranks of Excel and into Microsoft Access. So I was happily building away with Microsoft Access for, for many years and working at one of my clients, um, a fellow colleague said, I've found this really cool little app. I'm like, all right, okay, that sounds really interesting. And he was based near Heathrow, which wasn't particularly close to where I am. And so eventually I went to see him and he showed me this thing and he was really super animated about it. And the screen was changing and flicking. And he said, what you do, you drag this and you drop that and you click on this. And I'm like, oh, I don't understand any of this. And it completely went over my head. Anyway, I went away and kind of got into it. And after a couple of weeks, I'm like, this is a uh, pretty, pretty powerful stuff. You know, this is for me, it was the logical next step from Microsoft client server. Um, for those that have an access background, um, Microsoft did do web apps for a little bit, um, but it was never really truly a web-based product. And by the time we got to, you know, certainly before 2017, clients were expecting to, you know, use stuff on the web and, and use their mobile devices to access information. And I was still building stuff that you could only access in the office. Right. So, um, so it seemed like a natural choice to go that way. I got into it really quickly and the company that he worked for, um, I reported to the, to the owner. Um, I think because of my background within probably a few weeks, I'd gone past his ability, uh, which was a little bit embarrassing, but, um, it was fine. And, um, we started building stuff and it just, it just, as you've done before, it just, we built something and everyone's like, that's, that's useful. And then we added it to that and we added to that and we added a vehicle section. We added a compliance section and we put finance on them and we're knocking over all those old spreadsheets and manual processes and deleting and just bringing everything into this kind of, uh, uh what the, what my boss at the time was saying was like a helicopter view. You know, he could see everything from his phone and it's just growing from there. Um, that was 2017. I, became obviously a part of that community. I was aware of NAC and I hooked up with a number of people at NAC um, and got invited along to NACCON as a guest speaker. And I was really super excited to, to be a guest speaker. I was like, oh my God, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> and it was uh, totally embarrassing because when I got there, I did my, my session, which was like kind of how to build an app. And, and I was preaching to a room of about 23 NAC developers and, and everyone was just sitting there yawning, you know, like we know all this. And very quickly, we all realized that the knowledge level in a room was really quite high. Um, a colleague that you know, Julian Kirkness, was there, and that's the first time I met Julian. And he did an amazing session on how you can increase the, the, the power of NAC with Integramat and did some sessions. Um, I'm not sure whether you've ever met a gentleman called Mike Moore. Uh, he was very instrumental in getting NAC off the ground. He spoke with, uh, with Brandon uh, about coming over. So he, was, he had kind of got the show on the road. And I then realized that um, I'd gone from what I thought was a fairly big fish in a small pond to, to the complete opposite. And, and my horizon of learning just went way out. And I realized actually there was so much more that these tools could do. And it was really great. Felt part of the community. Um, and it's just moved on from there, really. So the following year, we had Chicago. And I flew out from London to Chicago. And I was a facilitator there. That was about 110 people, probably about 60 developers. Uh, made some really good friends and contacts there um, and learned loads more. And it's just amazing to see uh, what people do with these tools. It's just, I remember Brandon saying on his keynote when he built NAC that he never envisaged 
how many amazing, wonderful things people would use the tool for. And there is almost no no limit to it. So yeah, that's kind of my journey. And it's rattled on a few years down the road now. And I think you've said this before, or we've had this conversation before, that sometimes you look back at some of your apps you built five years ago, and you're like, your toes kind of curl up in your shoes a little bit. Yes, like, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, why did I do that? What, what was I thinking? Um, so it, it's the speed of learning has been quite dramatic. And I look back now and sometimes go back and rework stuff that I just didn't know quite how to do five years ago. And right. it just makes me think now, what will I be like in 2025 or 2026? Am I going to be like, oh my God, what was I doing in 2021? So yeah, <laughs> that's kind of where yeah. I'm at now. So talk about, uh, you know, simplifying the complex, using NAC to simplify the complex. That's something you put in your notes. And I love that term. And I'd like to hear you describe that and talk about that. Oh, wow. That's a real, it's, it's quite difficult. I mean, I wasn't really looking for a strap line. And um, it kind of came about from a number of different places. And some clients just sort of said, oh, it just makes it really simple to use. I think part of the problem we had with lots of companies that or almost every company that I've worked with starts off very spreadsheet heavy, you know, it's all spreadsheets and emails and, and you have a spreadsheet. And of course, as soon as you email this spreadsheet to four people, there's now obviously five copies of it. Right. Uh, and, and then it's all out of sync immediately. So there's no version of the truth. Um, workflows become impossible in spreadsheets, you know, um, data integrity in terms of how you capture it, where it goes really, really super difficult to do. So, you can simplify a lot of that complexity to the to the customer because they just use nice simple forms, which I was using in Access. We were using, you know, building forms in Access. Mm-hmm. And and everyone's probably experienced it from booking a vacation to doing anything online to booking a checkup at your you know, your dental place. You know, we use these forms which have this logic. So depending on how you answer one question, it may or may not ask you another one. And that makes the data capture much more robust and that helps to simplify those complex processes coupled with uh, probably the favorite thing for me in NAC um, is the rules. Um, I, I know there are other people I've talked to that say that, you know, that it's a very powerful display rules and record rules and submit rules, but record rules to be able to do things in the background um, and integromats like this as well. It's doing stuff behind the scenes that no one sees. So in loads of heavy lifting and, and making the customer, feel like it's a really easy solution. It's a really easy thing to use. Sometimes it it has an adverse effect because when they say to you, they'd like to develop it further, they go, well, it's really simple. You know, what we'll do is I press this button and press that button and it all magically happens kind of thing. You're like, yeah, there's (laughs) there's a lot of stuff going on in the background when you just press that button. Right. Um, So that's kind of simplifying the complex. You know, I'm always thinking if it takes someone five, five steps to do something, um, if it takes them five steps to do it, how could we get that down to four? Could we get it down to three steps? Could, could we get it down to just one button push? Could we do it on a, on a timed event of a trigger or something else? So I, I've always said that I'm, and this is a bit strange, but motivated by laziness is probably the only way I can describe it. Oh, yeah, the that, best automators are lazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm guilty. Totally guilty. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I don't want to do the same repetitive thing ever. You know, I'd rather invest some time to build it so that I never have to do that boring task again. So I can go and do more interesting things. And unfortunately in the world we live in and and lots of businesses, there's lots of repetitive stuff that people do have to end up doing and you can automate a lot of that. So I think that's kind of my whole simplifying the complex, making it seem almost seamless and frictionless to the, to the end user that they don't even realize what's going on in the background. So, yeah. The other thing about spreadsheets, and I, I see this more with Google Sheets, the cloud-based sheets, is, um, you know, people you kind of use them as kind of one-off databases. Oh, we need we need to collect data in a, from a survey, so we'll create a, a, a Google Sheet and stick it in there. Well, now we got another form we need to do. Now we got a lead capture, so they end up with tens of sheets, maybe hundreds of sheets over time mm-hmm. that you know, they forget about, uh, I'm guilty of this, create a sheet and I forget about it and I'm searching for something else. And I'm like, holy cow, we got a thousand names in here. Uh, and we, and I had a client where we were, we were doing that and we began to kind of get our arms around GDPR and the California privacy laws. And we said, okay, if we're going to automate the compliance of people asking for their data or deleting their data, what would that look like? Well, the first thing it doesn't look like is manually go, going and searching 60 Google Sheets and deleting their data. 
Yeah. So we, we got rid of the Google Sheets and put everything in NAC. We already had NAC, but we started using NAC more. And now we have a process that basically in 30 seconds, we'll either give them a copy of their data or delete all their data because it's all in one place. So that's... Uh, I think that that's is. the thing is it's trying to get your data in one place. Um, yeah. I know... There's a couple of things. I know you're going to ask me about um, kind of the rise of citizen developers. Um, so I'm not going to strain to that too sweet soon, but really spreadsheets were that first step for people to right. be able to create an IT solution, uh, very low cost, very quick implementation without having to involve their IT department. But um, it can become very fragmented. You end up with lots of silos with disconnected data that's difficult to manage. And, and also, with all respect, I think every customer I've ever worked with, every client that I've worked with, comes from that spreadsheet background. And there's nothing wrong with it. I'm, a, I'm not going to show off here. It's always a difficult title, but I'm a Microsoft Certified Application Specialist whew, in Excel and Access. So I went through that route, and I was the, you know, the Excel king uh, when I worked at uh, Vodafone for over 20 years. I know I don't look old enough, but um, I was the kind of the go-to guy if you had a spreadsheet query. But... If the only tool that you have is a hammer, every everything looks like a nail, exactly. you know. So it's that's that's your go-to. Like we need to do something. Well, spreadsheet's great, amazingly flexible. It's like zero friction to get into it. You can build something really fast. But they reckon something like, and I know statistics themselves often are wrong, but a very high percentage, something like eighty or ninety percent of spreadsheets have errors where you've got formulas looking at the wrong data ranges and totals are adding up the wrong things. And you can do a light bit of Googling and see there's some pretty horrendous business faux pas with people making big decisions on spreadsheets right. because someone's added another column and it's changed the formulas and added something or not added something. So they're very fragile. Um, and that was one of the things I found in my transition from moving out of flat file spreadsheets to relational databases is how do you safeguard the sanctity of that data and, and the great thing about things like access and, and knack is that you hide those tables you know and you just use forms to interact with your data so it's not only is it a one version one place for your truth but it's um kind of ring fenced you know you don't let people play directly with your spreadsheets right. so right. Um, you protect the client from themselves when they put data in and interact with data yeah i mean i i i never ever put a delete button on anything in NAC. Um, I, I do have a soft delete where it will change a field. So it's just kind of hidden, archived. Um, I, I learned the hard way. Um, people would say, well, it's, it's gone. I've just gone in and, it, and the record's gone. And you'd be like, mm, yeah, so you've deleted it. No, it's just disappeared. You know, it hasn't disappeared. Someone's deleted it. So yeah, I never give people that option to, uh, right. to delete because humans are totally fallible and, you know, um, yeah trying to protect the data is quite is key so it's the mythical knack gremlins <laughs> <laughs> yeah certainly so you mentioned this talk about the rise of the citizen developer uh and tell me about how you see this changing you know kind of now and how you see it changing over the coming years oh well if i could tell you how it's going to change over the coming years i'd be a rich man um i have no idea what's coming down the pipe yeah in my opinion uh I've, i really don't look too far forward these kind of things but so the rise of the citizens developer, uh, how I see this is you don't have to go back too many years ago that if anything, you wanted to do anything data wise, it had to be sanctioned and go through your IT department. Um, and IT, IT departments are now busier than ever. You know, they've got so much workload on um, that if you wanted to get them to, to create a solution for a bespoke solution to manage a piece of work for your department. I mean, they've got a, find someone to do that to cost it to, you know to probably to code it and, and then to test it and to launch it and maintain it and that's a big capex you know that's going to have to be signed off at probably a senior level and take possibly a long time if you can even get it past the board of directors to uh, right. to sign off so that kind of comes back to what i was talking about a moment ago lots of people um go to spreadsheets you know and, and obviously now google sheets and, and another you know another another web-based type systems um but it really isn't that many good quality robust solutions such as knack to build workflow databases where you can actually take something from initial to cradle to grave you know and manage right through a process so not just a spreadsheet and i'd have to say i've tutored a few people over the past couple of years and i've had friends uh i do have friends 
I still have friends uh, who liked the idea, I think, of getting into NAC because, you know, you can work from home. And I was going on holiday to Spain and sitting around the pool and doing some work. And uh, and it all sounds lovely. But actually, when I sat down with them and started to go through it, it became I became aware of the fact that because I've got lots of years of commercial background experience, I was a project manager at Vodafone. I've got a commercial background. I've got a spreadsheet background, certified a database background that really helps you a lot when you get to NAC. NAC is a great product and it's a very simple to use, but it does require almost like if you've ever used it, something like Photoshop or um, uh, Dreamweaver or AutoCAD. You know, these packages require some training and some learning. Uh, but once you've gone over that hump, they're super powerful. And my friends were trying to get into that space. Um, and it is, it, you know, it's challenging. Um, but I think the citizen developer, if you're coming from the right background or you persist and you get over that hump, it just gives you the ability to be able to build solutions without having to go through your IT department. If pretty much anybody that wants to uh, can position themselves in the company to be someone that actually grows systems and iterates them very quickly to drive real business benefits, you know, really fast. Um, and they're secure tools, you know, they're on Amazon Web Services, they're, they're secure, you, you're logging in, your data's safe, it's all backed up. You're not just on a server in the in the broom cupboard kind of thing. So yeah, these SaaS products, you know, software as a service, obviously, um, really low price to get into and, uh, you know, very quick to deploy as you don't have to launch anything, you just fire up a web browser. You know, it couldn't really be any easier. How I see it moving forward in the future? Oh, I don't really know. Um, I don't know what I don't know, I suppose. I mean, I never up until a few years ago heard of Zapier or Integromat or I heard of If This Then That. I'm not sure if you've ever come across that. That was my first, you know, API connection thing. I didn't really understand it, if I'm honest. Uh, but I got into Zapier for a little bit, but very quickly I met Julian and uh, we got into Integromat. So I don't know. I mean, I'm a little bit older than you. Uh, I, I know it's incredibly hard to believe. Um, but, you know, we come from a generation of pre, pre-internet. pre You know, I, I started work before fax machines were invented. Um, you know, I could not imagine when I was in my 20s what I would be doing now in my 50s. Right. So what I might be doing in my late 50s or early 60s, yeah, I mean, I just don't know what, what else can change. Will we have holographic databases, whatever that is, you know? I mean, I don't know. Um, certainly within the NAC, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to more features uh, and obviously they're, they're looking to try and can increase the performance, but they're kind of incremental things as a tool. Now it does so much and it, it doesn't do everything, but it does so much really well. Um, right. There've been a couple of clients when I've said, actually, you know, I'm not sure it's going to do exactly what you want. Um, as an example, conflict management on calendar bookings, you know, um, that's a hard one. Um, anything yeah. calendar related is difficult usually it is yeah but um yeah so how it's going to change i really don't know i mean i'm i'm open to <laughs> trying to keep up with it i'm still amazed at what what we can do you know pretty much sitting at your dining room table um the systems you can build and and we're just, we're very similar we have clients um you know obviously based i'm based in the uk so most of my clients are uk but i've got clients in the us um, I shouldn't, I shouldn't tell you that cause you're in the U S um, and, uh, I've worked with customers in New Zealand and Australia, um, because there is no boundaries, you know, it's right. just a web browser. So, um, yeah, don't think that answers the question at all, but Hey, yeah, I, I think <laughs> one thing just looking forward and not specifics, but I, I would, what I tell young entrepreneurs would be entrepreneurs, young business owners uh, that, if you don't understand these tools, you need to, because, you know, in the coming years, it's going to make way more sense to build this yourself, or at least understand how to ask somebody to build this for you. Um, just as this, as these tools become more prevalent and more easily to get at. Mm. Yeah. I find it quite strange actually, when you're talking to people that are under a half our age and they have, and it's no, it's no fault of their own because they don't, they don't probably have the interest and you and I are cut from similar cloth kind of people that do this are out and out geeks. You know, we just love this stuff. And, uh, 
I'm not sure I say I would I would do it for free um, because I do need to obviously earn some money. But if money wasn't an issue um, and I didn't need to do anything, I would probably end up still building stuff mm-hmm. because I just enjoy building. Um, for me, that personal journey, you get to a certain age, you kind of reflect on your history. I look back as a child, I, I loved things like Lego and, uh, and Meccano and and just building things and this is the modern this is the kind of up-to-date version for me now is that you can someone has a a problem or an opportunity and as they say necessity is the is the mother of invention uh, and they'll give you this challenge like how could we how could we solve this problem and and you build something that does you know maybe knack kind of vanilla or it may have some code it may have integromat as well and it's such a kick when they go this is this has kind of changed, oh, it's not changed our world, it's a bit overkill, but it has changed the way we work. It makes things so much more straightforward. It's made a difference. It's made an impact. And personally, you know, when someone gives you that feedback, that's immensely rewarding to me as an individual, is that you've had that opportunity to make someone's life a little bit easier or improve a process and increase productivity. And they may not even be on the same continent as you, you know, right. and you've managed to do that just from, uh, you know, your knowledge of how to use a tool. Um, off at a tangent for a second, my grandfather, who died many years ago, was a, was a cabinet maker, which is a, a kind of a master craftsman, and he built some amazing things. And I remember as a child being in his workshop, and he had, I can't remember exactly, but he had a, like a rack of hammers and, a, a, and several planes and hundreds of different screwdrivers. And they were all for different types of applications for a job. And this guy knew all the tools. And I like to think that I'm getting to that point that I can now use that tool to, to build, you know, good things, you know, nice furniture, but in a software world. So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I feel about these tools now. Um, and, uh, what was the question? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> no that's good so you have you have uh you have builder in your blood it sounds like uh mm. you know and you know like like you said even if you didn't get paid you'd want to build something i, I think builders always want to build uh, and make something i think it's a, a creative as well i think there's a creative um angle so my, my grandfather was a cabinet maker my sister's a, a commercial artist and i can't draw at all um as a child i really wanted to be good or an adolescent i I wanted to be good at either woodwork from, from my grandfather, which I was terrible at, uh, or metal work, which I was even worse at metal work. Um, <laughs> I, I would have loved to have been able to be like my friends and strip down an engine. Or I could have stripped down an engine, but I wouldn't be able to put it back together. Yeah, putting it, putting it back together is the hard part. <laughs> yeah, I was terrible. Within a, I could take everything apart. Taking it apart was easy. Right. Um, but building things, you know, I have I've was never able to do bricklaying or carpentry or... And it was only of the last sort of not since the late 1990s that I realized software was something that I enjoyed doing. And it's kind of building, you know, you're creating something that didn't exist. And that's a, it's a good feeling, especially when people use it. And right. I probably like you, I mean, we're in that, we're in that situation now where people are constantly looking at their kind of Facebook likes and how many subscribers they've got because it's a barometer of, I don't know, personal success. But I, I do tend to look at customers' apps and just see how many records are in there, you know, right. and think, wow, you know, there's 300,000 records in that app now, you know, they've been, yes, that's a lot of use. And I built that. So, yeah, it's quite rewarding. Yeah, that's very cool. So we talked about kind of citizen developers. Let's talk about no-code tools and the power of them and uh, kind of this no-code revolution where I think we're just kind of in the beginning stages of um yeah i I think i kind of covered a a lot of that now um what are some do you have other no code tools other outside of knack and integramat that kind of go to tools that you kind of supplement or use alongside well that's a really easy answer no no (laughs) no i've decided to um you know i mean there are other products out there you know such as your air tables and and other competitors in this space like Zoho. I mean, I did audition things like Zoho Creator and Podio and Caspio, and I, I tried to get my head around them for a while, and it just didn't click. And it was like, it was just, for me, it was just too hard. It, it, I'm sure there are people out there that use these tools and get on with them famously, but for me, it just didn't, it didn't, the penny didn't drop. 
and knack when i first oh, okay when i first got into it it made no sense but within a couple of weeks of just studying the website and going through their tutorials i'm like yeah i get this this is a pretty similar to an access database right and um so i've slightly lazily stayed with that tool uh, integramat helps me to extend that functionality outside of what NAC can do natively and i have tried other competitors to NAC, which for various reasons i haven't gone down that route whether it's cost or functionality or company ethics or whatever yeah. um but i haven't gone down the bubble route mainly because of people like you because <laughs> i hear other people do it and they go oh my god i can't can't get my knack brain around bubble yeah i can't understand <laughs> bubble i've tried two or three times yeah and so i i, I love building with these two tools and um i think if there's something i can't do uh i i normally phone you up um or or you know there may be other people that can can answer that question but yeah i don't have a whole raft of kind of no code tools i don't do website building uh anymore i used to well i suppose saying that's a slight lie because wix you know wix is a platform that i use which is a no code drag and drop mm -hmm. um so i suppose that is um so now i'm thinking um jot form that's another no code i've yep. used jot form for um particularly complex uh data capture for a insurance client and then we pulled it through integramat and pushed it into NAC. Um, so yeah, there are a couple, I suppose, that I, I have used that, uh, I hadn't really thought about there. Um, oh yeah. Another one cloud convert. That's another kind of no code, yes. no code. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I suppose there are, that I, and I suppose I'm so used to them now. I'm so used to, you just sign up and get a subscription and you just use the product. Um, that I'm possibly not even aware that they are no code tools anymore. Um, yeah. and I'm not a coder, you know, I'm a copy and paster. I can copy a bit of code and just change a little bit um but the problem is i don't have an interest in it it just doesn't excite me um i can't uh i can't get excited about looking at code and trying to work out why it doesn't work um, yeah, i just want to build things yeah me either i tried at one point in time and then it's like it's been 30 minutes and i was like oh i missed a semicolon i this is stupid i'm done <laughs> too tedious too tedious. yeah yeah so um yeah i don't really know uh that's kind of, I don't have a wide portfolio. I've, I've decided, you know, I'm kind of all in on NAC as a business. Um, if, if uh, anything were to happen, I would uh, seriously have to think about retiring. Um, but <laughs> seriously, yeah, I, I'm committed to using that platform and want to do the best job I can with it. Um, and also as an individual personal thing, you know, I, I'm trying to take things a little bit easier as I'm progressing in years and I'm, I've, you know, I've been working for 37 years now, so I'm, I'm about due to slow down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, just concentrating on these two tools still gives me a huge depth and breadth of, um, solutions that I can build. So. Right. Very cool. Well, thanks for your time. Thanks for joining me. Anything else you want to say before we jump off here? Uh, not as particularly interested. No. Um, I think, you know, the, the, my last thoughts really, if, if any of what I've said resonates, um this kind of space is good to get into if you have a background that you're kind of interested in numbers and data um i would say that it's a difficult space if you know we go and meet friends and I've, someone i've not spoken with before and i'm with my partner maria and i go oh, hi you know what do you do and they say to maria she says i'm a veterinary nurse and it's brilliant because everyone knows what a veterinary nurse is. Right. And they say to me, what do you do? I say, I build web databases. And I just go, oh. you know, um, so I, I just change it now. I just say I'm a software developer. And most people don't ask any further than that. Right. Um, but yeah, it's not a glamorous place to be. But uh, yeah, it's what I love doing. So uh, um, if you're interested in helping build solutions for people, then it's a great space to get into. Yeah, very cool. Well, thank you. Thank you, Andy. Thank you for your time. Thanks for inviting me along. It's very yeah. interesting.